So I'm Abhijit Datta, and I'm going to present the paper Encrypt or Decrypt to make a single key BBB secure non swiss Mac. It's a joint work with Nilanjan Datta, Midun Landi, and Kanye Suda. So informally, a message authentication code, or a MAC, is a symmetric key algorithm that ensures the integrity of the message. In specific, if Alice wants to send a message to Bob, and they do not care about the confidentiality of the message, but about its integrity, then Alice and Bob first share a secret key K through some secure key exchanging protocol. Then Alice applies the MAC algorithm on the key K and the message M that it wants to transmit and generate the tag T, and then send the message and tag pair to Bob. Upon receiving it, Bob verifies that whether the tag is valid or not by applying a verification algorithm on the key K, the message M, and the tag T. The security notion of a MAC says that if after looking at sufficient number of samples of valid message tag pairs, no computationally bounded adversary can forge a valid message tag pair with significant probability. Now, there are two types of MAC. One is stateful MAC, another is stateless MAC. non space MAC is an example of a stateful MAC. non space MAC is a MAC where the MAC algorithm, apart from key K and the message M, takes an additional input, which is called nonce, and the verification algorithm as well, it takes the nonce N as an additional input with the key K, the message M, and the tag T. Now, there are two types of security notions of a non swiss MAC. One is non-suspecting security, in which the adversary is not allowed to repeat any nonces while making its MAC query. And another is non-smissive security, where the adversary is not abide by this rule. However, the adversary can repeat nonces while making the verification query. The first non space MAC was proposed by Wegman and Carter in 1981, and their construction is known as the Wegman-Carter MAC. So in Wegman-Carter MAC, the hash value of a message is masked with a random string. But the limitation of this scheme is, each time you authenticate a message, it needs to generate the random string fresh. So one possibility is to just introduce a pseudo-random function and apply a nonce over it, so that the pad that is output from this uh, function fk, it is solved with the hash value of the message to generate the tag t. Well, it gives a beyond birthday or a kind of optimal security in non-respecting setting. So it gives some order of epsilon qv security, where epsilon is the differential probability of the underlying hash function, and qv is the number of verification attempt of an adversary, but it has no non-smissive security. If you just repeat the nonce for once, then it has no security at all. But in practice, it is sometimes difficult to maintain the uniqueness of nonce. So we want to have a scheme so that it have certain security when nonce repeats. In crypto 2016, Cogliati and Surin come up with a construction by, in which they encrypt the output of the Wegman-Carter MAC, and hence the construction is known as the encrypted Wegman-Carter. This construction gives the same security in the non-suspecting setting as to that of uh, Wegman-Carter MAC, but additionally, it gives a birthday bound or a n by two bit security in non-smissive setting. But there are few candidates, practical candidates of pseudo random functions. Say one may want to replace this fk by some pseudo random permutation or block cipher. But once you replace the fk with ek, the pseudo random function to a pseudo random permutation, then the non suspecting security of the, of the eventual construction goes to birthday bound. So we are looking to construct a MAC scheme which gives a beyond birthday bound security in non suspecting setting. So what can we do? So how to instantiate this fk? So one popular approach is to instantiate this fk by a popular sum of permutation function. So this fk is replaced by this sum of permutation function. And we know that the sum of permutation function is a secure, optimally secure PRF, and hence the construction gives kind of optimal security. But this scheme requires three block cipher codes. 
So the question is, can we reduce the number of block cipher calls? The answer is yes. In crypto 2016, Cognitive and Sudin proposed the EWCDM or encrypted Wegman Carter with Davis Mir Mac. It's a non based Mac where the FK, the pseudorandom, pseudorandom function, is instantiated by a key Davis Mir function. And it gives 2n by 3 bit Mac security in non respecting setting and n by 2 bit security in non misuse setting where n is the block size of the underlying block cipher. In the same paper, Authors conjectured that EWCDM is secure up to n bit in non respecting setting. And the single key EWCDM, where this key and k prime are equal, is also, it's also beyond but the bound secure against non respecting adversaries. In crypto 2017, many can naves proved the optimal PRF security of the construction, and their proof was essentially relied on Paterin's mirror theory technique. And the n-bit security proof of Paterin's mirror theory is extremely hard to verify. In fact, in DCC 2018, Cogliati and Surin proved the beyond but the bound PRF security of single keyed encrypted Davis Mayer construction. And there they have acknowledged the difficulty of proving the beyond but the bound security of single keyed EWCDM. Here comes the motivation of our construction to construct decrypted Wegman Carter with Davis Mayer construction, or in short, DWCDM. So the rest of the talk is organized as follows. So first we talk about the specification of our construction, followed by the necessity of our non-space reduction. Then we talk about mirror theory and the extended mirror theory, which is a useful uh, tool to prove the security of our construction. Then we give an overview of the security proof of our construction, and we finally conclude by giving a glimpse of a pure single kit variant of DWCDM constructions known as a 1K DWCDM. So let's begin. So DWCDM construction is pretty much similar to EWCDM construction. The only part where we have changed that the second block cipher call is replaced as its decryption call. So as you can see that it's a single kit non-space MAC, but the non-space is 2n by 3 bits. That means the remaining n by 3 bits are set to 0. Why do we need this restriction? We will come to that. And we have obtained 2n by 3 bit max security in non respecting setting and n by 2 bit security in non misuse setting. Well, there are a couple of assumptions on the underlying hash function h. First of all, it has to be regular. That means for any x and for any y, the probability of hx equals to y is negligible. It has to be almost zero universal and it has to be three-way regular, that means for any distinct x1, x2, and x3, for any non-zero y, the probability hx1 plus hx2 plus hx equals to y is negligible. So why do we reduce the non-space? So we show that if we take the full n-bit non-space, then we will eventually land up to a burger bound forgery attack. So suppose an adversary fix a message m, and the nonce is, say, x1. Now, it queries to the MAC oracle with the nonce x1 and the message m. It obtains the tag x2. Now, in the second query, it sets the nonce as a previous response. That means, in the second query, it makes the query with nonce x2 and the message m. It obtains x3. Similarly, in this way, he continues. Now, if he obtains the sum of x3 plus x4 plus x5 plus x6 equals to 0, then he can make a valid forgery attempt by, by setting the nonce as x3, the message as m, and the tag as x3. So in general, if xi plus xi plus 1 plus dot 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 xj is my 0, then one can come up with a valid forging tuple, which is xj, xj m, and xi. So now the second phase of my talk is to talk about the Paterin's mirror theory. So let us consider a system of Q equations, Pn1 plus Pt1 equals to lambda 1, Pn2 plus Pt2 equals to lambda 2, and so on and so forth, Pnq plus Ptq equals to lambda q, where let us assume that this lambda is values are non-zero. And phi is a surjective index mapping function which maps the set of 2q many indexes to a set 1 to r. 
Now, when we apply this phi function, we eventually get a reduced system of equation, which is p phi n1 plus p phi t1 equals to lambda 1, p phi n2 plus p phi t2 equals to lambda 2, and so on and so forth, p phi n q plus p phi t q equals to lambda q. And this system of q equations is over r many variables. And the goal of mirror theory is to lower bound the number of solutions to p such that p a naught equals to p b for any distinct a and b which belongs to the set 1 to r. So the general setup of mirror theory is that we have r distinct unknowns, we have q many system of equations, and we have an index mapping function. So and one can view this system of equation as a form of graph, where the node of the graph is essentially the nodes of the, um, the uh, variables of the um, variables of the equivalent system of e uh, e reduced system of equation, and we are interested in specifically two types of graph. One is the circle, that means the equations. Uh, forms a circle, and another is a degenerate graph. So you see, when we have a circle graph, then the corresponding equation system of equations has no full rank. Whereas in case of degeneracy, we have say phi of n1 plus phi of t1 equals to lambda 1, pi of p phi of t2 plus p phi of sorry p phi of t3 plus p phi of n n2 equals to lambda 2, and p phi of n3 and p phi of t3 equals to lambda 1 plus lambda 2. So if you just combine them up, if you just linearly mix them, then you will eventually lead with p of p phi of n1 equals to p phi of n2. And we do not, it is, this kind of graph is not desired for mirror theory. And uh, the, mirror, the main theorem of the mirror theory result says that if my graph doesn't contain a circle and it is non-degenerate, that means all the equations is good, then for a fixed phi and for a fixed tuple of lambda, the number of distinct solution is at least 2 power n falling factorial r by 2 power of n cube, where the maximum component size, which is denoted as xi max, satisfies the following constraint that xi max minus 1 whole square into r is less than 2 power n over 67. The proof of Miller theory is an inductive proof. Induction takes place on the number of components, and the proof is verifiable up to 3n by 4 security. Beyond that, it is extremely hard to verify. And by definition, mirror theory deals with a general system of equation and non-equation. But till now, the treatment of non-equation has nowhere been found. So the goal of this extended mirror theory is to incorporate the affine non-equations along with the affine equations and is to lower bound the distinct number of solutions of a system of bivariate affine equations with bivariate affine non-equations. So the general setup of extended mirror theory is pretty much the same to the mirror theory, but we have this uh, non-equations part. So we have r many system of uh, r many variables, and we have q many system of equations and v many system of non-equations, and this phi is a surjective index mapping function which maps 2 into q plus v many indexes to a set 1 to r. So here we again can view the system of equation and non-equation as a form of graph. We again have two types of graph, circle and uh, degeneracy. But along with that, we have uh, another type of graph which is called the degeneracy of type 2. So see, the system of equation here is my p phi n1 plus p phi t1 equals to lambda 1, p phi n2 plus p phi t2 equals to lambda 2, and p phi n3 plus p phi t3 not equals to lambda 1 plus lambda 2. Now when we plot, I mean when we view this equation as a form of graph, so p phi n1 plus p phi t1 equals to lambda 1, p phi n2 plus p phi t2 equals to lambda 2, and my p phi n3 equals to p phi n1 and p phi t3 equals to p phi t2. That means the resultant system of equation and non equation becomes inconsistent, right? There is no solution of this, of this system of equations. So we do not want this type of graph as well when we incorporate the affine non-equations in our system. And the main result of extended mirror theory that we have proven in our paper that if my graph is circle-free and non-degenerate of type 1 and type 2 for a fixed surjective index, ma index mapping function phi and a triple lambda prime, then the distinct number of solution with the maximum component size is restricted up to three, is at least two power n falling factorial three q by two over two power n q times 
1 minus 5 q cubed by 2 power 2n minus v by 2 power n, where v is my number of affine non-equations. So now in the third phase of the talk, I'll just give a brief overview of our security proof of our construction. And uh, uh, we have used the H coefficient technique to prove the security of our construction. So, so adversary is interacting either with the real world and the ideal world. And the real world is comprised of two oracles. One is the MAC and the other is the verification oracle. And the ideal world is consisting of two oracles. One is the random oracle, another is the reject oracle. Uh, so when adversary is making query nonsense message to the random oracle, it just gives a random value as a tag. And when it uh, uh, makes query to the reject oracle with the nonce message and tag, it always reject. And the advanced advantage of the uh, adversary A is defined as the probability difference that, uh, that A outputs one when it's interacting with the uh, real world and A outputs one when it's interacting with the ideal world. After the interaction is over, the adversary obtains a transcript, which is tau, is the union of the MAC transcript tau m and the verification transcript tau v. We denote XRE as the probability distribution of obtaining a transcript tau in the real world, and XID as the probability distribution of a transcript tau in the ideal world. And Cal V is a set of all attainable transcripts, which is partitioned into uh, two sets, good set of transcript, good T, and the bad set of transcripts, denoted as bad T. And the main theorem of H coefficient technique says that if there exist two positive uh, parameters, say epsilon ratio and epsilon bad, such that for all good transcript tau, the ratio of the probability of obtaining the transcript tau in the real world to the, to the obtaining of the transcript in the ideal world is at least one minus epsilon ratio, and the probability of obtaining a transcript tau in the, say in the in, uh, probability of, uh, of, of a transcript uh, is a bad, is uh, upper bounded by epsilon bad, then the advantage is bounded by epsilon ratio plus epsilon bad. So uh, when interacting with the uh, system, uh, uh, with, the, with the real oracle, the eventual system of equations will be something like this. So the, in the left-hand side, these are the MAC equations, and the right-hand side, these are the verification equations, where lambda i is, is uh, ni plus of h of mi, and lambda i prime is ni prime plus h of mi prime. So from this system of equations, we want to characterize certain bad events, and we will characterize the bad events keeping in mind the bad event of the corresponding extended mirror theory system. So here is my bad event that uh, all the lambda i should be zero. I mean, if you can recall that uh, uh, we have a system of equations where we had this lambda i's, and we, we, we required that this lambda i should be zero. The other is lambda i is equal to lambda j and ti equal to tj, which is basically a degeneracy graph of part one, of type one, n i equal to t j and lambda i equals to lambda, sorry, n i equal to t j and lambda i equals to lambda j, which is again degeneracy of type one, and another is t i equals to zero. And in the right hand side, we have, uh, we have the following bound of the corresponding event, that the first event is bounded by QM epsilon reg, where epsilon reg is the um, regular advantage of the underlying hash function. Uh, the second one is bounded by QM square epsilon a x u by two power n, that's pretty clear because this lambda and lambda j, this, is, this comes from the hash uh, differential, uh, differential probability and ti equals to tj, it's coming from, I mean, for ti equal to tj, it's two power n. And uh, for the bound of C3, it is qm epsilon ax2 by two power n3, and for ti equals to tj, it is qm over two power n. So are we done? No, not yet. So we have to also bound the component size of the MAC graph. So uh, we have three types of MAC graph in the component size, and uh, we also have to bound the circle in the MAC graph as well. Here we need to deal with the two types of circle, because if we have cycles of size three, then essentially it leads down to the component size of MAC graph three. And uh, the bound for both of these events is QM over two power two n by three. We are also not done. We also have to bound the uh, circle of the verification graph as well. So here we need to bound the cycles of length two and the cycle of length three of the verification graph. And we do not need to go beyond of that because if we go beyond of that, then essentially it will be uh, lead down to the component size of MAC graph with three. And uh, the probability of, the, of this event is the maximum of this two QB epsilon three reg, where epsilon three reg is basically the three regular, pro, three regular advantage of the underlying hash function, and two QB epsilon AQ, QB epsilon reg, and QM over two power two n by three. So in summary, 
So we have the bad probability, which is of the order of Qm over 2 power 2n by 3. And if these bad events do not happen, then we have a nice system of equations. We have a nice graph that doesn't contain any circle, that doesn't have this degeneracy of type 1 and type 2. And from the extended media theory, we have the following bound that 5 qq over 2 power 2n plus qv over 2 power n, where qv is the number of non-equations, affine non-equations. And here, hence, by applying the H coefficient technique, we essentially have the advantage of uh, the math is bounded by Qm over 2 power 2n by 3 plus Qv over 2 power n. Okay. So finally, uh, uh, we have also uh, shown a, a pure variant of uh, DWCDM, pure single kit variant of DWCDM, where we derive the hash key as a block cipher output of a fixed string. So the, blocks, uh, so the fixed string is, say, 0 power n minus 1, 1. And this is the, uh, and the hash key is derived as a, um, uh, as, as a block cipher output of this fixed string. The security proof of the one key DWCDM is pretty much similar to that of DWCDM, and we provide the same level of security of DWCDM. And, uh, and as a future work, we, we, we are hopeful that um, DWCDM can be proven secured up to 3n by 4 with non-space n minus 1 bit. And we are currently working on this, and we hope to finish it as soon as possible. Thank you.